Anything but history. For history must be false. I cannot, therefore, see how this can be imputed as a crime, or how any of the king's ministers can be blamed for his doing what the public has no concern in, for if the public be well and faithfully served it has no business to ask by whom. The very idea of true patriotism is lost, and the term has been prostituted to the very worst of purposes. A patriot, sir. Why, patriots spring up like mushrooms. Whatever was the conduct of England, I am equally arraigned. The gratitude of place expectance is a lively sense of future favors. I have lived long enough in the world, sir, to know that the safety of a minister lies in his having the approbation of this house. Former ministers, sir, neglected this, and therefore they fell, I have always made it my first study to obtain it. I will not attempt to deny the reasonableness and necessity of a party war, but in carrying on that war all principles and rules of justice should not be departed from, gentlemen have talked a great deal of patriotism. A venerable word, when duly practiced. If they are really persuaded that the army is annually established by me, that I have the sole disposal of posts and honors, that I employ this power in the destruction of liberty and the diminution of commerce, let me awaken them from their delusion. No expense has been incurred but what has been approved of and provided for by Parliament. I took the right so by the ear. I have never been afraid of making patriots, but I disdain and despise all their efforts. Persons extremely reserved are like old enameled watches, which had painted covers, that hindered your seeing what o'clock it was. Many words are not wanting to show that the particular view of each court occasioned the dangers which affected the public tranquility, yet the whole is charged to my account. Nor is this sufficient. IT has been observed by several gentlemen, in vindication of this motion, that if it should be carried, neither my life, liberty, nor a state will be affected. Is it no imputation to be arraigned before this house, in which I have sat forty years, and to have my name transmitted to posterity with disgrace and infamy? The very idea of true patriotism is lost, and the term has been prostituted to the very worst of purposes. Have I given any symptoms of an avaricious disposition? Oh, do not read history for that I know must be false. Whatever was the conduct of England, I am equally arraigned. No expense has been incurred but what has been approved of and provided for by Parliament. Robert Walpole 1st Earl of Orford, also called, 1725-42 Sir Robert Walpole, born August 26, 1676, Houghton Hall, Norfolk, England, died March 18, 1745, London, British statesman, in power 1721-42,